community groups will lead the change for a sustainable future because everyone is part of at least, or everyone is part of a community. Communities consist of groups of people who come together in a variety of ways, whether it be physically, electronically, or virtually, and those ways are continually evolving. But that fundamental connection between people has not changed for millennia. All people belong to a community. People belong to more than one community. This means that each community is connected to other communities through their membership groups. The more people who are connected, the more that ideas and beliefs and values can be transitioned through these groups. What is a sustainable future? It's not a bad question. There's a long answer, but we don't have a couple of years, so the short answer is that it's a world which is socially just, culturally rich, and environmentally sound. People have the opportunity and the generally have the desire to create that future. And it is only through communities that this is going to occur because of the driving force that people fundamentally want to create a better world for themselves and for their families and children and friends and, and communities. So, community groups will be the force that creates a sustainable future for these reasons, because they have the connections, the people, the membership, the drive, the motivation, and because we said they would. Well, we've got the somewhat unenviable task of convincing you that one of the things that we most love, community groups, are not the way to create a sustainable future. We'd like to convince you of that for three reasons. The first is that political power is such that community groups just are a whisper in the chaos of politics. If you think, for example, of the Franklin Dam campaign, you might imagine that it was Bob Brown who saved that river, but it wasn't. Bob Brown needed the work of Bob Hawke and Gareth Evans to actually intervene constitutionally to create a sustainable future for Tasmania. And so convinced was Bob Brown that community groups were not the way to go, that what did he do? Well, look where he ended up, in federal politics. He knew that community groups were not the answer, and he moved to a place where he could indeed make a sustainable change. <laughs> And if the power of politics is not enough to convince us that community groups have had their day, well, what about the power of corporations? The sad reality is that no matter how much we agitate in our small community groups, our voice probably just can't be loud enough to drown out Pepsi-Cola, to drown out Woolworths, to drown out Coles. And anyway, we live in an age where our individual power to make a difference is perhaps greater than it has ever been that as individuals we can precipitate for change as we saw in the Arab Spring, we can campaign for change at the corporate and government level, we can do so through social media that has not been available to communities in the past. Community groups are something that we've grown out of. We clearly can affect great change through individual action. And some of that happens right here in Bondi. Bondi Muggers, Frederick's radio show, these things aren't about minutes and agendas and community groups and public liability insurance. They're about awesome people having great ideas and taking action to turn that into reality. So for those reasons, and a whole lot more that you'll hear from my colleagues on the transition team, community groups, well, they've had their day. They were nice, they made us feel good about ourselves and they kind of placated our need to belong. But really, great change can happen in all kinds of other ways. Thank you very much, Kelly. Okay. What would you like? 
Well, Tilly, it's very sad to hear your dismay about community <laughs> groups and, and their role in the future. So, But I'd like to help you out with a few things. Um, I, I really think it's quite unlikely that Bob Brown would decry community groups and their, their impact and importance. And I think that's because in the environmental movement, for example, community groups are still very strong, very important. Um, and what you'll find, one of the great benefits of community groups is that yes, they might start small and feel weak and powerless and all those unfortunate things. Um, but they can also be focused, they can also be nimble, and they can also um, come together quite easily and quite rapidly. And they can band together and multiply. Um, don't know how many of you are familiar with Paul Hawkins' book, Blessed Unrest, but in that he talks about how there are literally millions of community groups coming together across the world um, and starting to act independently of any type of overarching direction from the government or corporations or the, the places that are assumed to have power within society. Um, and just to finish on Bob Brown, the places like the N NCC, Nature Conservation Council, they're made up of community groups. That's what they do. So community groups can start as a base. Do you have a diagram here? <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Uh, this, is, this is the community. Um, and basically community... Well, this is not really illustrating my point at all. But... <laughs> But it illustrates a different point, which is, <laughs> which is important, and that is that your responsibility, yeah, your, your, your responsibility um, lessens once you go from the community to other settings. Um, so as a, and that you can actually refocus people on their responsibility um, and 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 on their 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 environment. Um. Uh, yeah, so uh, another point about that, I think, when you, when you think about communities versus government um, versus corporations, is that it also, by, by strengthening community groups and going from community, which is not what this question was about, it wasn't community leading a sport, it was community groups. I think there's a big potential to encourage the uptake of people in community groups, especially in places like Bondi, where there's a thriving community, but perhaps the community group isn't getting recognised for what it could be. And I think um, if I was had extra time, it would be about ways to make community groups more sexy and more interesting um, to, to push the work they do. And th there's a lot of good work, I think, um, in things like community gardens um, and local interesting kind of campaigns and projects that can get off the ground and give people um, give people reasons to get involved. Um, I think I'll leave it pretty much there. But um, no more diagrams. <laughs> no. But but in, but in summary, <laughs> in summary, um, yeah, community groups can definitely scale as well. They can band together and they can can start to cooperate and link together um, and affect change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Back to our group. All right, Kerry. Hi. Um, so, just first point is just to have a uh, talk back to what Andy said about um, all these wonderful connected people. Well, Andy, that's great to have wonderful connected people, and let's all connect and be happy la la together. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that these people have any skills or any vision in what they're actually going to do and will actually orchestrate anything. Just be happy la la. So, um, definitely for that reason, community groups are not the way to go. Um, community groups also have minimal funding. Um, I know that for sure, because I just ran a fundraiser. And we raised about $1,200, which is great, but we're not going to change the world with $1,200. Um, sure. Place to go for that is government or corporation. If you really want to affect change, you need money to affect change. You need money to campaign. 
Um, also, community groups rely purely on the passion of their members. So we have very passionate people in community groups, but if your two or three very passionate people leave, then the community group disappears and dissolves. It's not going to be effective. And the people who are passionate are not there and they're not paid to be there, so there's no reason for them to stay if something else comes up. Um, community groups do not hire people. They don't hire people with specific and different skills in order to orchestrate what they need to do. So you tend to get people, as I said, who are very, very passionate, or people who are looking for that happy la-la friendship stuff, which is very important, but um, you tend to not get people who have long-term vision and people who are good at organising long-term projects within the community group, and therefore you might have a lot of great sideline projects, but in terms of a long-term sustainable future, that really needs to be left up to government and corporations who can create long-term focused plans with vision. Thank you very much, Kerry. Kristen, back to you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Go for it. Okay, well, I've actually just come today from a forum that's all about community groups, so I rained a bit, guys, I'll do my best. Um, I'd like to, by a couple of the um, unfortunate misconceptions that we just heard, <laughs> um, I'd like to go back to the, the first, first few things that were said, um, referring to, to Bob Brown and the Franklin campaign and all that sort of thing. Certainly, yes, government was instrumental in effecting change there, but do you think they would have made that change if there hadn't been community groups in their ear? In their ear, acting to, um, acting to drive them on? They wouldn't have made that change without the, the effort of inspired community groups. So, equally with corporations, Really what's going to shift their behaviour is our buying preferences. So it really, ultimately, we have the power to shift their behaviour, which in turn shifts the world. Um, what was the other thing that was said? <laughs> I got my notes. Um, yeah, oh, the, the power of individual action. Absolutely, individual action is very important. But um, it's the community groups that surround the individuals that give them the power to act and increase their skills. I would not have had the courage to stand up here without the community of CSL people who uh, who've kind of built that up this year. So. I think, yes, individuals are powerful, but we forget what stands behind them, which is a community group. Uh, and to rebut from McCary's point, um, yeah, no skills, no organisation in community groups. Well, I think you guys are attesting to the fact that there are, in fact, skills and organisation in community groups. <laughs> but that's not really a fair thing to say to you guys, because you're like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> um, the other thing is, I suppose, I, I work in, in advocacy, and you see that there's a lot, particularly more, there's more and more knowledge of how to do advocacy. And I think there are more and more people knowing that they've got to train the community up in community advocacy and community work. So I think there's a lot of opportunities in the future for increased training and increased skill bases within the community. Um, there's all sorts of online tools available, but there's also various courses available, like CSL, to train people up. Um, oh yes, and money. Money for community groups. Well, again, we're more and more seeing the power of um, sort of crowd fundraising. So I think, again, we've got a bright future with community groups. <laughs> um, yeah, we have, there were a few other points I wanted to make about community groups. I, um, I think community groups have got a real, real skill in listening to, listening to the community because it's not the community going to speak to some faceless bureaucrat with no offence meant to faceless bureaucrats. This is the community speaking to other members of their community. You're going to get a much more open and respectful dialogue when the community is listening to itself. There's a group called the Sydney Alliance. Um, which, which has done a, a long listening project throughout 2010 to 2011. And that was all about hearing the community's concerns, their own concerns. And they used that to set their strategic agenda for the next few years and how they're then going to influence government. So I think that, that illustrates the role that community groups have in listening to the community. Um, uh, yeah, and just before I... Oh, there's a few other points, but my brain's failing. So before I wrap up, it, it does empower the unheard, empower the unheard people. And I think you have to give credit to the power of common passion. And in community groups, I think, is the key place to find common passion. Uh, I'm employed because of common passion. 
Um, 50 years ago, a group of bushwalkers got together and said, we, we love the bush, we think it should be protected in national parks, and we think that there should be a national parks and wildlife service looking after it. And that community of people who love the bush were in large part responsible for the fact that we now do have national parks and national parks and wildlife service. And here I am today being able to afford to stand here because of that. So credit to the, the power of passion in organising communities. I want to stop off that. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, okay. Hello everyone. Okay, well um I don't know about you know the rest of the group, but I for one am not skilled at anything. So, I know. So, uh, there's a point for us. Okay, so, um, <laughs> i just like to say, okay, so let's start with um, why, why, whatever we're for. Now, um, let's talk about um, China's, you know, ban on plastic bags. Uh, who enforced that? The government did. Um, let's talk about the uh, container deposits here in South Australia. Community groups, no. It was the government. The government did that. Now, um, reason why. Community groups are too small, any influence. And I know other people have said that, but it's true. I mean, it's locally based. I mean, if you're able to get it up to, you know, the local government or the state government, what are the odds that they're going to go up to the federal government and go, oh my god, no, it's not going to happen. Um, another thing is, uh, limited supplies and resources. Right? I know for a fact that fundraising and you know charities, they can give you a bit of money, but they can't give you a lot of money to, you know, to do everything that you want to do. And it's and there's also there's inside of community groups, there's a lot of you know, it's very occasionally egotistic. Like everyone has their own agenda. They want their own things. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. Um, I think that's better. No, I think that's better. Um, and yeah, I, I don't normally go to these things, and I can tell from being here for an hour that that happens. <laughs> and, yeah, like, also there are a lot of different community groups all striving for different things. I mean, if one community group was to go, um, oh, let's do this, uh, let's build a fountain in Ethiopia, and I don't know. And another community group was like, no, let's build a water park. You know, you're gonna have, it's, there's holes in the net. You're not going to be able to catch anything. You can, you know, different sized nets for different fishing spots. I like fishing. Um, so really, it's... I, it, I just think community groups, um, for this topic, debate, um, I just don't think they'll be able to change anything, really, besides small and locally. But throughout the whole, you know, world full of millions and millions, billions, and billions of people, the influence is very small. Thank you. Uh, that was fantastic, actually, David. Thank you. I really want to address some of those, those points that you brought up. In fact, why don't we start with that? I'm going to put it to our expert panel here who's arguing for community groups. Too many cooks in the kitchen. What about that problem, huh? Too many community groups doing too many dispersed efforts in too many different places. Who wants to take that on from here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about that? Oh, I, t I turned it off. Oh, nice, oh, nice okay. tactic there, Palmer. <laughs> yeah, that, that was an improvement. Is that too loud? Just to let you know, we were sponsored. We just didn't put the branding up yet. It's all good. That's a way of being all messaging. Who sponsored you? Now, now, the person with the microphone, please. Let's keep it civil in here. Um, the reason I wanted to take it first is just to give an example um, of how community groups can come together in, in, under a bigger banner to work for a more strategic cause together. Um, where I've been today is at a regional conference for the, the Great Eastern Ranges Initiative, which is a conservation initiative that runs up and down the coast of Australia. And the very point of it is to bring together land care groups, advocacy groups, councils as well, but we're not going to talk about them because it's community groups, but also lots of different community groups um, to work together, not changing what they do per se, but to make sure that they're all aiming at the same vision and they're all strategically aligned. Um, so yes, there are lots of books in the kitchen, but they can all be contributing to a fabulous meal. Wow. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Any other responses to that question from our uh, CSL team? Anything to add, or shall I move to the next thing?
How about the question of resources then? All right, one more, one more here, okay, on this side. See, I'm being a little bit mean, a little bit rude. I'm putting it over to you guys. No resources for the community groups. If they can't affect the change and the corporates and the government is not involved. Well, Mikey, thank you for your question. Um, <laughs> I actually watched a, an amazing TED talk the other day um, by a lady in New York somewhere. And she, she was, she exists. Kate, do you know her name? The woman, the woman who. The name's Maria. Uh, yeah, but look, basically, okay, the, the point I'm trying to make with this story is that community groups may not start out with money, but they can start out with people and they can rally people around common aims and common issues that affect them in their local area. And that you have an immediacy when you have a local impact and a local issue. Um, so once you have that starting point, it, there are ways to get funding. I mean, people in the community group don't just fly in from nowhere. They, they also exist in wider society and they have roles and they have positions and they can tap into networks of people who can help. Um, and there are ways to then, as Kirsten mentioned, leverage that ability and to start to organise and also do things like have pilot programs which can then be scaled and expanded upon. So look, I, I agree that it, it is an issue and you know, maybe we don't have a bar tab tonight, but um, that there are ways to uh, obtain funding and to tap into the other networks and organisations that exist within society which can then um, help power and propel and build the fire that the community has sparked. Excellent. Thank you very much, Kikara. And I'm going to pass it back to the transition guys on the topic of connection and common cause. Who wants to take that one on over here? Because corporates, let's, let's put it this way. Can corporations coming with a common cause? No. Their interest is to make money. Governments run by leaders, political leaders, with their own agenda. How about communities actually having a common cause? So the challenge of community groups is that they offer something that the world no longer needs. We can unite around common causes without needing the structures of a community group. We can gather together as communities, as my colleague Andy has talked about, we do have an inherent desire to connect. We don't need a community group to facilitate the meeting of that desire. We just need each other. We just need the places where we live, the places that we gather, a shared meal, a shared interest. Formalising it as a community group around a shared interest is satisfying nothing other than some kind of administrative need to perhaps have your ego stroked by being an office bearer or perhaps have some validation because you, you belong to some kind of club. It's unnecessary. We're people who are inherently made to communicate and care for one another. And we can do that no matter what context we live in because we have a shared purpose. We connect to people who care about what we care about and we exert our individual power to make a difference through those informal communities. The formalisation through community groups, it's a waste of time and we've got better things to do to save the world than to sit around talking in meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to continue that? Jacob, do you have anything to add? I agree with everything she said. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you've got the microphone. How about we ask you something about, um, I want to hear a little bit more about the, um, the different causes coming under one roof and the egotism that you sometimes see within the community groups. Many different interests. Could you, could you delve into that? That was actually a really great thought. I want to hear more about that. I came up with it myself. Can you repeat the question? So you mentioned in, in, your, in your points that you talked about the, the individuals in a community group actually have a lot of big egos going around, which might be motivated by their passionate ideals. And after spending an hour with us already, you would experience that. Tell us more about that. Well, um, okay, well, let's just uh, 
I've known Nods for a while. Um, <laughs> get rid of him. Get rid of him. Make me the chair. I want to be the chair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've known Lance a while, and I know that Lance is all about, um, you know, uh, permaculture and let's, you know, save the world and environment and everything. But um, I know that other people are here just for the free meal. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> it's not free. <laughs> here for the delicious food. Um, and I, I know that, um, like, not everyone in a community group is in the community group to um, to promote a cause. Some are just there for the you know for the feeling of actually being in a community, being in a group. So people might have ideas about stuff that's not even involved in the um, in the what the what the group's striving for. Like um, I come here and I, I came here and I'm like, oh, can we eat steak? And I was told no, it's too expensive. And there's like, there's not enough funding for steak. <laughs> big, big fish, small pond, you know? Yeah. The net's too big to catch a steak. <laughs> excellent, so on the steak point, we're going to come back now. <laughs> that was excellent. Do you want to continue? Yeah. Do you want to continue? Okay, go ahead, Karen. Um, just to answer on uh, Mikey's question, we've got another point in relation to egos, I think it's partly we have problems in relation to egos in community groups, but it's also in relation to the people who are in community groups tend to be friends and close friends of each other. And issues come up when you have people in groups who know each other too well, as opposed to people who are in governments um, who are there and employed to do a job and who have some separation in their lives. So one tends to find in community groups that you have people with a lot of passion, but they have different, I different ideas, and because of um, other, uh, uh, you know, in, um, I guess personal issues that come up between people, things cannot get off the ground and not move in the direction they need to move because there are things in personal relationships that will hinder um, projects from moving forward. I'm going to put that back to our crew over here. All right, Andy or Karen, you want to take that on? <laughs> Passion, not being sustained. Please tell us how you would argue against that. Oh, I just want to continue on what you two were saying about the personality difference and different aims and that sort of thing, because. Um, despite the fun, I think it's a really important thing and something that I've definitely come to terms with a lot uh, through doing CSL um, and have thought about it a bit. And so, so doing CSL, you, you get thrown together with a bunch of people who all have their own ideas about how they want to change the world and their own very strong trajectories and backgrounds and that type of thing. Um, and coming into uh, a project phase where we all tried to organise ourselves around projects. Um, there was an immense like pulling of uh, people in different directions and different opinions and all that type of thing. Um, but I think if you have a sorry, if you have a genuine uh, commitment to the process and um, that there's something solid underlying your intention being here tonight, then I, it's corny, but I think that's actually the most important thing, and that um, by then kind of staying with each other through that process, you can find a way to um, find an expression for what it is that you want to do. Um, and that project may not, or that project or outcome may not be what you initially intended, but um, it doesn't mean that you won't feel a connection to it and um, gain strength from doing that. Um, and just, just also on this idea of that having diversity of opinion and different perspectives is an issue. I think, I think we see that in society at the moment um, with people talking across each other and I think that's more an issue about types of, the type of interaction we have and what passes for debate and what's latest debate rather than the issue with actually having the different viewpoints of itself. So what I think 
community groups are actually really good for is bringing together people who have vastly different views and trying to um, engage in dialogue instead, which is a kind of distinct concept, which is more about, all right, let's get all our differences out on the table, let's, let's see all our random intentions, and let's just commit to talk through that and see what emerges. And the, the idea is that by doing that, people feel heard and they feel a part of something, and that you can begin to have some sort of shared direction again, rather than this kind of like fraction, you know, attachment internally to your own direction and wanting to pull in several ways. So I think it's a, a, a really interesting project that community groups can take on to start shaping the type of interaction. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Karen. I'm going to, unless you have something to add, Andy, real quick. I want to throw it open. We have about 10 minutes left. Okay. Anyways, if people, before you go, uh, if people have questions, okay, that you want to put to the panel here, I'd love to hear them, either either side. All right. So just after Andy's talking here, we'll, we'll get a couple questions in. 10 more minutes before that dinner that you all came for. <laughs> I can go with everything that Kieran just said. Um, egos for me, are a problem whenever they occur, not just about community groups. Ego is rarely a good thing, possibly never a good thing. Um, we haven't really distinguished between um, community groups that function well and those that don't, and ego may well be a large part of those that don't. Uh, the success of groups, um, the impact that they have may well be linked back to that. Uh, again, the groups do often act as a place to flesh out the ideas, so as individuals, yes, clearly we can all make a difference. But it's very hard as individuals to get heard. And actually most things happen because groups of people get heard. And most groups get heard because they have a message, which is a consistent group message. And that's often come about because they flesh out the ideas, which often help because they didn't have any go to start with. So it can work quite well. Um, and my other one, I do want to rebut something that was said way back when, which was about um, community groups don't hire people. That's not, not actually true. Um, there's quite a lot of evidence overseas. Um, Seattle, I will use as my example because I know a little bit about it. And the community groups there through the community matching grants that they have, which are very similar structure to the one that the city of Sydney now have, um, have a long history, like going back to the early 80s, of using the money by government to hire people to do things for communities, in particular planning, is something that's very successfully there. Um, so that does often happen, and what's interesting is that um, Kerry mentioned that long-term planning should be left to governments. I think we can all take that as a joke, to be honest, and not the best one you've ever made, sorry. Um, they haven't done a particularly great job, and um, by that government at the moment, as many of you would know through the Planning Act that stuff that's going to change, but also overseas, governments are turning to community groups, or to the community in all its definitions, to resolve these wicked problems because they can't be resolved by government, they are too complex and they require the detailed knowledge of community groups whole. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. All right guys, just a few more minutes of questions. Does anybody have a burning one they want to throw into the floor? Bridget, we'll come to you next. I'd just like to challenge the sort of outdated definition of a community group. Uh, I would challenge that community groups can spring up online. They don't have to have committees and chairs uh, and bureaucracy. They, it can be an online group uh, that can have a lot of passion and uh, an opportunity to bring people together at a very short notice or a long term. So community groups can, I, I would challenge the, the notion that community groups have to just be a structured organisation. And even groups like GetUp are able to pull together communities to respond to political and corporate uh, challenges to our sustainable future. Okay. Does anybody in the panel want to respond to that comment of communities not necessarily being the way that we know them? Anybody on there? Yeah? All right. The ways that we name things are so important, aren't they? 
And I guess if we say a community group can be any gathering of people that happens in any place with any number for any goal, then we've lost the debate because any conversation that happens, you could define it as a community group, right? So for the purposes of tonight, we've taken the idea of community groups as being structured or semi-structured groups of people who come together in, a, in an organised way. Otherwise, I don't think we can have a meaningful conversation about whether they're useful or, or not. But yeah, very fair point, absolutely. Oh, that was a wonderful debate. I think it shows, listening to the, the conversations, both sides have got very good arguments about this community group for action and governance. Um, for me, the overwhelming message is both are necessary. I'm curious to know what the panel think about that because taking one great example of the, um, the plastic bag ban by government, you could argue that that is perhaps the approach of governments is authoritarian to, to ban something, but perhaps a community group, um, strong action, might have had people who were passionate about not using plastic in the first place. So just because uh, a government can lead to some um, big part of change doesn't mean that the community action won't work in a preventative measure. So perhaps both are necessary. And I would also say that that's going to mess up your debate. <laughs> oh, very good point, that we need to involve all levels. Somebody over here on the panel want to take that on? Jacob wants... Uh, no, I love hearing from you, Jacob. <laughs> 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 Andy? Um, very simply, the government, um, theoretically at least, is a representation of the community. That's it, really. Well, I just, I, I don't, I don't know if um, this has anything to do with um, this comment, but uh, if it is, yay. Um, I just, <laughs> I, I'm such an idiot. I just, um... You're an extraordinary young man, keep going. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Um, I just, uh, just like to say, um, I watch a little bit of the news, not a lot, but a little, and I've, I've never really seen, like on the headline, um, local Bondi-based community group changes this, or, you know, Group transition Bondi, no offense, changes um, the world. No, I've never seen that. Um, and it's, it's coming, mate. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> all I see is. All I, <laughs> all I see on the news is. All I see on the news is government does this, government does that. I never see community group helps influence government to do this, or community group helps do that. Never seen it. And. Um, <laughs> Uh -huh. that's, that's an extremely good point. <laughs> and in fact, what I'm going to do is um, let us segue that into, uh, we're going to go to dinner, but during can dinner, I, can I move a, a do you want to move a question? I, no, I definitely move a motion, uh, given the argument. Okay. Uh, I'd like to move a motion that transitions Bondi dissolve itself, and all the proceeds go to its longest standing member, which is Elvis. <laughs> so that's the motion. <laughs> <laughs> so successful debate for the transition fund to, to shoot itself to death. Great right one. <laughs> Anyways, the, the question that we're going to take on uh, after dinner, which, which actually goes to this exact question that Jacob has raised, is, and we're going to discuss it and do a little bit of uh, workshopping around that, is um, if transition bond die was the answer to the universe, <laughs> what would transition bond die need to stop doing? What would it need to start doing? And what would it need to keep doing? Wow. All right. Awesome. All right. So we're going to take on that exact question. In fact, it's a perfect segue. Thank you, Jacob, so much for that. Wow. Guys, can we please have a round of applause for our <laughs> And a special one for Jacob as well, everybody. <laughs>